Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good evening. I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and we want you to interact with us. How can you interact with us? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can interact with us by becoming a partner. Did you know that if you partner with this ministry, you have a piece of the fruit, every bit of fruit that comes in from all the material that comes out of this ministry, you can be a part of it simply by becoming a partner or by giving. So you can go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719-635-1111. Also, you can interact with us when we're live. So on Mondays and Fridays, we have live Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. And Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. And that is all mountain time. So I tell you the time so you can interact with us. You can calculate it out from wherever you're watching and tune in while we're live and then submit your questions. So that's why we want you to tune in while, while we are live so that you can submit your questions. So in whatever forum you're watching, we want you to go down to the chat section, type in those questions as you listen to Daniel uh, teach tonight, and then we'll get to as many of your questions as we possibly can in about the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program. Last but not least, we do have live prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they are trained in their authority, you guys. They know how to stand on the Word of God. They're, they want to pray with you. So if you're going through something, please do not hesitate. Give them a call at 719-635-1111. So those are all my announcements. Now I get to introduce Daniel Amstutz, who is our teacher tonight. He wears numerous titles. We did not cover all the titles, but let me see if I can remember. <laughs> Normally I try to cover it with everyone. Uh, but you are the director of Karis Worship School. Mm -hmm. And so that is a third year track with many yeah. different tracks. It's a third year school with different tracks in it. Yes. So there's a whole lot that we have added to the worship arts school, yeah. worship school. Yeah. Um, he's also the director of Karis Worship. So mm -hmm. all the worship that comes out of Karis Bible College, he oversees all of that. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing. We hold uh, worship on Mondays and Fridays yeah. this school year. So you can live tune in if you didn't know that already. On Friday. On Friday. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't mm -hmm. live. Uh, you don't live stream Monday. On Monday. Oh, yeah. only on Friday. Yeah, only okay. on Friday. So there yeah. you go. Only on Friday morning. But what a great way to start your Friday morning. I know. Right. And then of course healing school. We and do then worship healing as school. well. Yes, yeah. we do healing school on Wednesday, except yes. for this week. Except for this week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Bless it on the flexible. <laughs> Bless. The, yes. Exactly. Because they will not break or something. That's right. Like that. <laughs> so normally healing school is on Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, mm -hmm. and Daniel is the director of of healing school as well. So he wears numerous hats and you're such a blessing. Oh, thank Included you. in that list is amazing teacher. So I am so ready to hear what you're bringing today. Amen. Thank you, Julia. Yes. So great to be with you and great to be with you wherever you are joining us from tonight. Thank you for being a part of our live Bible study. Mm -hmm. Julianne and I love doing this and you can tell that whoever's hosting, whoever is teaching, uh, there's just such a great sense of unity Amen. that's that's here at the ministry. And uh, we, we just love doing what we do and we're so grateful to be a part of this vision that is literally touching the world. It is. I mean, incredible, incredible opportunity. Yeah. So tonight I want to talk to you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit from the inside out. Oh man, I'm so excited to share this tonight because you know why the Holy Spirit was given to us? Well, let me first say in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, the Apostle Paul was writing obviously to the Corinthian church and he said, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Well, do you know, I grew up in a very traditional church and I didn't know that. I mean, you would think that I would have known that from the time I was, I was born again when I was five years old. And I had definitely a five year old understanding of what that meant. It wasn't until years later that I actually began to realize and then eventually had a revelation of the fact that the spirit of God, the very presence of God dwells in us. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens when the Holy Spirit comes is he brings his own language. 
I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but the Holy Ghost has his own language Hallelujah. and he brings it with him when he comes into you. Amen. So you have the ability now not to just pray or to sing or to speak with whatever language would be your known language. In my case, it would be English. But we have the ability now to literally speak in the language of the Spirit of God. Amen. Wow. You know what, guys? This is a game changer. And no wonder the enemy has fought this revelation of speaking in tongues, praying in other tongues, singing in the Spirit. You know, all of these things have become such a big deal in the body of Christ that it's become something, unfortunately, that's become divisive. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the enemy is the author of that division. He's the one who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, always. Amen. And so uh, I grew up in a real traditional church, like I was saying earlier. In fact, my dad was the pastor. And when I went to college, I got to tell you a quick testimony, and uh, we'll, we'll see how much of the, of the word we get into tonight, because I've got a bunch of scriptures I want to share with you. Amen. But I want to share this because this is important. So many people think that tongues have passed away. And this is what I was told when I was in this traditional church. Well, I didn't really have a lot of revelation on this yet. And so when I was uh, in my first year of college, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I was in a new church and I was so excited to share what had happened with everybody. Oh. I came back to the church and I told them what had happened. Well, you know, these people, I love them. I respected them. But they told me that what I had just experienced was from the devil. Oh, no. Yeah. And it was crushing to me because I thought, you know what? This is, I thought this was like one of the best things that's ever happened in my life so far, only to find out these people that I loved and respected were telling me that it was from the devil. <laughs> So this is a long testimony and I don't have time to share the whole thing with you tonight. But what I want to tell you is that for about two years, I rebelled. I got hurt through it. I shouldn't have responded like I did, but I did. I responded carnally and uh, I took about a two year journey to just act out and do whatever I had been told not to do growing up. Cause I thought, you know what, if this is from the devil, then obviously I don't know God. I don't know his voice and I don't even think I want to serve him anymore. Mm. So they told me that this was from the devil. So you know what I did? I started partying and running around with the devil's crap. <laughs> I went into clubs and of course this was way back in, you know, the seventies, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I went into these clubs. I went into discos. Anybody remember discos? You're right. <laughs> and I hung out with the devil's crowd. And I want to tell you something. Not one time did I ever hear anybody speaking in tongues. <laughs> Wow. Wow. You right? would think if tongues were yeah. really from the devil. Makes perfect sense. Everybody in the devil's crowd would be speaking in tongues. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Obviously I was lied to. And the enemy is the one who is the liar. Mm. And he's the one who's trying to get us to believe that something that God has given to us for our advantage, for our blessing, for our edification, he's trying to get us to believe that either it's, it's from him or that it's, that it's passed away, yeah. that it's no longer relevant for us today. Wow, you guys. I am so blessed to be in this ministry mm -hmm. that teaches the truth, teaches God's whole word, not just parts of it. And thank God that we know that the Holy Ghost is now living on the inside of us. Amen. And wherever the Holy Ghost is, he brings his own language. So I want to look at a couple of things today because the Holy Spirit is described in John chapter 14 and verse 26. And I want to look at that. Uh, tonight, you know this scripture, but Jesus is speaking here and listen to what he says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit and the helper is capitalized. See that? But the helper, then he goes on to say, just for clarity, the Holy Spirit, whom the <laughs> father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So you know what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit? He said, he's the helper. Now, listen, if your name is called the helper, what do you think you want to do? Oh, 
the hell? <laughs> I'm just saying. And you it's know deep. what? We all it's deep, isn't it's it? It's so deep. That's so deep. <laughs> and we all need some help. Come on, people. <laughs> right? We yes. need help on a daily basis. Yes. And Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is gonna be your helper. Oh. Well, how how is he going to help us? Well, one of the things he said right here is he's going to teach you all things. Yeah. And he's going to uh, bring to your remembrance all things that I have told you. Well, we're going to find out some more things that the helper does. And I'm telling you, you're going to be so grateful for this Holy Ghost help because it will literally shift you from just living in a natural realm into the kingdom of God and the things of the spirit that are supernatural that will absolutely be uh, bondage breakers Amen. and they will help reveal to you what you need to see in order to have your own personal breakthrough. Amen. And my prayer for you tonight, guys, I'm telling you, we don't have time to not know about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Right. And it's not a ministry from the outside in any longer. He's in us. That's why Paul said, don't you know that you're the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? He doesn't just visit you once in a while. He's living on the inside of you and wants to be your helper. Wow. Thank God. Can I just say that backwards? Wow. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that whole sentence backwards. I was like, what is up here? Oh, my goodness. Wow. You know what? There's wow, and then there's wow, and the Holy Ghost is the wow factor. Amen. I mean, he's so amazing. We don't even have words in English to be able to talk about it, Amen. which is why he brings his own language. But I want to show you this out of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 mm -hmm. through 28. This is such a great passage. And it says, likewise, the Spirit himself also helps in our weaknesses. Woo, come on, somebody. Amen. Likewise, the Spirit does what? He helps. There's the word ministry of the helper. He helps. And, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes have you ever felt like God's problem child? Mm. <laughs> you ever been there? Yes. You're just going through some stuff and you're like, oh, man, I, I just wish I was more together. I wish I, I wish I was, you know, and you just fill in the blank. Well, you know what? A lot of times when you're in a mess, the Holy Ghost is going to help you to turn that mess into your message. Mm. Oh, that's good. That test that you're in. That's awesome. He's going to help you to turn that thing into a testimony. Amen. And only the Holy Ghost can do this, guys. We can't do this by pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Praise I God. mean, you know, because you've tried. I've tried. We, we can't do it. Amen. But he says here, likewise, the Spirit also helps us, not in our strength, but in our weaknesses. Ah. Praise oh, God. I love that so much because you know what? When we are weak, the Bible says, let the weak say what? I'm strong. I am strong. Well, how do we become strong? Well, let's go on in this verse. He says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Mm. Romans 8, 26. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts well, who would that be? Mm. God knows what the mind of the spirit is. Look at that. So he's searching your heart. He knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, I, this verse has been so abused. Oh. You know, Romans 8, 28. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You know, people had told me when I was in my traditional church back in the day that if somebody had cancer, well, you know, it's just God working all things together for your good. <laughs> so wrong. Oh, it's so wrong. You know, that is not at all what this verse means. But notice that the Holy Ghost is searching your heart. He's searching the hearts because he knows what the mind of the spirit is. Mm -hmm. See what the Holy Ghost does? Remember, what is he? He's your helper. So even when you can't see 
what you need to see. And even, listen to me, even when you are hiding from your own self, the Holy Ghost is searching your heart to show you what you need to see. And he's going to show you from the word of God, but he's also going to show you because he's praying for you. He's helping you in your weaknesses because you don't know what to pray for as you should. And how many times are you in a particular situation where you're like, God, what do I do? Right. You know, what, what do I say right now? Or, or where do I go next? And you have the general will of God from the word of God. But when it comes to specific things, many times you don't really know, but the Holy Ghost does. No. And the Holy Ghost is searching your heart because he knows what the mind of the spirit is. So when you're praying in the spirit, do you know what you're praying? You're not praying for the benefit of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I mean, think about this. Again, this is like a hashtag duh, right? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag. Hashtag duh. Duh. Right? You know why? Because the Holy Ghost is praying in you and through you Amen. to help you. Help you what? Praise God. Help you in your weaknesses. Hey. And you don't know what you're, you're experiencing. You don't know what direction to go yet. And the Holy Ghost will help you. Well, how does he help you? By you praying in the spirit, by you praying in the language of the spirit of God. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says there are many things that begin to happen. Mm. So uh, here's what I think is so interesting about the spirit of God, Julianne. In Galatians 5, 17, it says for the flesh lusts, and this word means strong desire, the flesh lusts against the, the Holy Ghost, against the spirit. And the spirit lusts against the flesh or has strong desire against the flesh. Hmm. And these are contrary to one another so that you don't do the things that you wish. Man, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we have a want to, but we just don't end up doing what we want to do mm. because of the weaknesses of our flesh. Well, the Holy Ghost is our helper. And you know what? He is so jealous over you that he does not want you to be conformed to the image of the world. He doesn't want you to be conformed to the ways of the world. He is so jealous over you to be conformed to the image of Christ because that's his job is to help you to glorify the Lord in your life. One of the many jobs that the Holy Ghost loves to do on your behalf. But it says here that he absolutely has strong desire against the flesh. Mm -hmm. This is the Holy Ghost. This is the one who is just as much God as the father and the son. See, I mean, I don't know where we get this ridiculous idea. I guess it's because when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost descended on him like a dove. <laughs> oh my gosh, people. It's a bird. The Holy Ghost is not <gasps> is a bird. <laughs> so the, the Holy Ghost is not a bird. No, he is as not. much God as the father <laughs> and the son. They are three in one. <laughs> And the spirit of God is so excited for you Amen. to know him, to know Jesus, that he wants you to be conformed to the image of Christ, which is why he's in you. Amen. He wants to help you in every area of your life. So you know what he does? He has strong desire against the things of the flesh. The things that are trying to hold you in limitation, the things that are trying to bring you into uh, limitation mm. in your life and, and weaknesses of your flesh, the Holy Ghost will be your helper. And he has strong desire against the things of the flesh. Yeah. Look at this verse also in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. It says, for you shall worship no other God for the Lord whose name is jealous hey. is a jealous God. Listen, this isn't jealous like jealousy of the flesh. This just simply means that you have a God who loves you passionately. Praise God. He loves you so much that he does not want you to become entangled Amen. with the stupidity of the world system. And the enemy would love to steal, kill, and destroy from you by getting you entrapped in all kinds of attractions and affections and things that are just going to weigh you down. But the Holy Ghost is your helper, and he wants to help you to be conformed to the image of Christ instead of all this other junk that's going on. Wow. Wow. So I'm telling you, God is so passionate 
over you and, and in love with you, that he gave us the spirit of God to be able to be our helper. And he says, I'm going to help you, but I'm going to help you even in your weaknesses. So, wow. You know what? The spirit of God it has a specific will for your life, not just something general, right? It, it, I mean, there, there are many things we can find out from the word of God, but we also have to hear from God when it comes to specific direction in our life. And so uh, how are we going to know what the will of God is in these areas of specific need? Again, direction, uh, maybe do I move to this city? Do I go to this place? Do I take this job? Mm. You know, there's not a scripture that necessarily is going to speak to that specific situation, but the Holy Ghost will. Amen. And he'll show you exactly what you need to see when you need to see it. He'll not only reveal the will of God for your life, but he'll show you how to do what God has called you to do. Man, it's almost a, an unfair advantage. I mean, really, really you know, when we have the Holy <laughs> Ghost living on the inside of us, if we really begin to appreciate what it is we have and who we have and the incredible impact uh, and, and just the life changing power of the spirit of God coming from the inside out, how on earth are we ever going to want to go back to where we were Amen. or the way that we were living? No, thank you. <laughs> My life has been so transformed, but I'm telling you, I was lied to for so many years. I had no idea that speaking in tongues and the things that we're going to talk about tonight were actually for my advantage, mm -hmm. that God was giving me all these things to help me to be able to be conformed to the image of Christ and not to the ways of the world. So I want to jump over to 1 Corinthians 14 and look at verse 14 and 15. It says, for if I pray in a tongue, now I want you to pay attention to this. What? If I pray in a tongue, what? Ooh. My spirit prays. Did you notice that? Yeah. So it's your spirit that's praying. Now I want you to hear that. I know you've heard that probably many, many times, but I want you to hear it with fresh ears tonight. I said, when the Holy Spirit comes into you, he brings his own prayer language. If, if you pray in an unknown tongue or in a tongue, the Bible says what? Your spirit prays. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know that your spirit can pray? Wow. But my understanding, he goes on to say, is unfruitful. So my spirit is praying when I pray in a tongue, but my understanding is unfruitful. We'll see at that point, this is where many people have disconnected because they're like, well, if I pray with my spirit and my understanding is unfruitful, then what's, what's the point? How is that possibly going to benefit me? And so through lack of knowledge, we've been robbed. We really did not understand what God was saying to us in the word of God by the spirit of God. And then he goes on to say, so Paul says, well, so what's the conclusion then, right? Well, he goes on to say, the conclusion is I will pray with the spirit. Watch this. And I will also pray with the understanding. Hallelujah. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. No wonder the enemy has fought against speaking in tongues like he has, mm. because what we can do is we can allow the spirit of God to pray through us by us praying in other tongues. It's our spirit man that's going to pray. And then we can just simply take a moment or two to listen, to pause and to begin to pray out with the understanding what we've just prayed in the unknown tongue. And this is how God will bring revelation to you. Mm -hmm. This is how God will show you things that you would never be able to know otherwise. There are hidden things that God has for us in the spirit realm, and it's up to us to be able to cooperate with him to be able to see what we need to see and hear what we need to hear. Did you know that when you pray in the spirit, you pray the perfect will of God? Amen. Wow. Yeah. The perfect will of God. Well, you say, well, that's great. But if I'm praying the perfect will of God and, my, and I don't have understanding, then how is it going to benefit me? Because the Holy Spirit who knows the will of God, who is searching your heart 
is praying through your spirit man. And he says, not only will you be able to pray from your spirit, but you will also be able to then pray with the understanding. So God's going to bring revelation to you that will absolutely cause transformation in you and transformation to flow from you. Now let's look at it again over here in Jude, verse 17 through 21. <laughs> Jude is just a one chapter book, right? So we don't really say Jude one, it's just Jude verse 17 through 21. So, but you beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this, talk about timely, how they told you there would be mockers in the last day who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. Mm. Can anybody say hello 2022, mm. right? We've got people walking all over the place with their ungodly lusts. Now, he goes on to say, these are sensual, or in other words, soulish or worldly people who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the spirit of God. And this is why they're doing what they're doing. But he goes on to say, but hallelujah, Amen. you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying, here it is, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What's he saying? He's saying, if you're a believer, you've got the language of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. And when you pray from your spirit, man, the Holy Ghost living in your spirit, and now you're allowing that language of the spirit to be prayed through your spirit, man. He says, what you're going to do is you're going to build yourself up Amen. upon your most holy faith. So again, we see how the spirit and the word are always going to work together. The spirit of God was never intended to replace the word. In fact, the, the spirit of God wrote the word. <laughs> right? Yeah. So think about this, how when you build yourself up upon your most holy faith, well, you know what? There have been times when I've been so depleted, my heart has been so overloaded and I'm just like, God, I just, I, I can't do this anymore. You ever been in that spot, mm. you know, where you just have anxiety or fear about a particular situation or uh, whatever the, ha you know, whatever it may be. God says, you know what? I've given you something that'll help you hey. in that moment Amen. that will absolutely build you up to where you will no longer be overloaded or depleted or full of fear, but you will be so built up upon your most holy faith that you will keep yourself in the love of God mm. instead of keeping yourself in stress and worry and anxiety. We've got a choice but we've got to learn how to cooperate with what God has given. Amen. And when we think that it's the enemy who is, has given us tongues or that tongues has passed away with the last apostle, like I was taught, oh my goodness, so stupid, right? Mm -hmm. When God says, no, I've given you this prayer language to be able to help you, to edify you, to build you up to where you can absolutely be kept in the love of God. Mm -hmm. And how does faith work? by knowing how much God loves you. Amen. So when you get in a, a stressful situation, one of the best things you can do is begin to pray in other tongues. Man, I tell you what, I've got so much tonight that I would love to unload with you and our clock is ticking so fast. When you get on this side of the desk, it goes into time warp. <laughs> it seems like it, doesn't it? Doesn't it? it just seems... What did you get about a page and a paragraph uh, into your nose? Probably, <laughs> which is kind of typical of me, you know. I'm telling you guys, God <laughs> is so, so excited for you to get a hold of this Amen. revelation because this is a deal breaker right yes. here. God wants you to know what the Bible says about this. And, you know, let me just tell you this. There are four diversities of tongues Amen. that I want to talk about very quickly. And then I want to uh, open it up for some Q and A and uh, we'll, we'll learn from that process together as well. But tongues, number one, are for personal edification. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that's one of the most uh, significant things about speaking in tongues and God transfers divine spirits, uh, divine secrets rather from his spirit to your spirit divine secrets 
from his spirit. He knows the will of God. He prays the perfect will of God uh, from, from his spirit to your spirit. And you can pray that out. Uh, and then you can become edified in this word. Edify simply, uh, is the word edifice, right? We, we get the word edify from the word edifice. Well, what's an edifice? Edifice is a building. You, you build something by praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, what do you build? You build yourself up upon your most holy faith. God is saying, I want you built up. I don't want you depleted. I don't want you filled with anxiety and stress. And how many people do we have in our world right now that are so filled with stress that Bible says in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear. Mm, man. Listen, this is not you and I, okay? This is our time to thrive. Amen. And we ought to be spending more time praying in the Holy Ghost than we ever have before. The Apostle Paul actually said in Scripture, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than y'all. And this is the man who wrote a good portion of the New Testament, right. a man who was loaded with revelation. Well, I think there's a, there's a supernatural connection here between him praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, building himself up upon his most holy faith and the amount of revelation that he walked in. Absolutely. So primarily tongues is for edification. And when we're talking about what we describe as your prayer language, it is for every believer. I'm telling you, Amen. there are a lot of people who will say, oh, well, I, I think tongues is okay, but it's only for a few. Well, no, because now you're, there's diversities of tongues. And this first thing that this first diversity I'm talking about is really for every single believer. Amen. If you've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, and if you're a believer, you do, you have the ability to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues and his language that he brings with him will be praying through you the perfect will of God. Bible says that you give thanks well, yeah. you pray divine mysteries. And I'm so grateful that the Holy Ghost knows exactly what to pray, even though I don't. And even when I'm in times of weakness, his strength is made perfect Amen. in my weakness. So good. Wow. God's for you. Amen. Quickly. Number two is tongues are for interpretation. And this would be one of the nine gifts of the spirit. Okay. And this is not for everyone. Not everyone's going to be operating in this gift, which is usually from a platform or on a microphone in a gathering of believers to where it can be heard above the crowd, so to speak. And when this uh, tongue is given, it would need to be interpreted. Okay. So uh, these are some of the nine gifts. These are two gifts that works together, tongues, the gift of tongues and, and interpretation of tongues. And uh, when these are given, they're powerful. I remember being in a Catherine Kuhlman service years ago. And uh, somebody gave a tongue from up in the balcony, uh, way over in the corner. And the interpretation came from the, the lower area on the, on the main floor. And again, loud enough for everybody to hear. And it was so powerful that after that tongue and that interpretation came, you knew those people didn't know each other, but it was a supernatural message that God wanted to get to that gathering of believers. And everybody just burst out in praise and applause as a result of that tongue and Amen. interpretation. So but that was a gift of the spirit for the purpose of public edification. Whereas your prayer language is for your personal edification. Amen. And you can pray in that and speak in that anytime, anywhere. And the, like the apostle Paul said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than y'all. Hallelujah. Amen. I think he was from South Jerusalem. Y'all. More than y'all. <laughs> okay. Let that go. So number three, <laughs> tongues are for intercession. And this is where Romans 8, 26 kicks in, where the Bible tells us that he helps us and, and will pray through us. And many times God will have you praying for someone for a particular situation. And you won't know how to pray for as you ought, but the Holy Ghost knows exactly how to pray and he'll pray through you. Lance Walno and I were in, I've shared this before, but we were in a meeting, uh, I think about a year ago up in Ohio together. And Lance was sharing about how he ends up in these crazy places, you know, in God. 
and ends up in places like the White House and, you know, these strategic meetings with these politicians. And he's like, God, I never asked for this. How on earth do I end up here? And God says, oh, no, you've been praying that out when you pray in the Holy Ghost for years. <laughs> he just didn't have understanding on it yet. Mm -hmm. But he was praying out the will of God, which the will of God was for him to be in these strategic situations. Amen. God was preparing his heart to be able to move him into these circles. And what an influencer, mm -hmm. what a game changer it's been for him and for so many of us as a result. And then lastly, just because we don't have time, tongues are assigned to the unbeliever. And the scriptures you can write down are 1 Corinthians 14, 22, and also Acts chapter 2, verses 4 through 11. And uh, study it out on your own. And there's a lot more that I would love to share here tonight. But guys, listen, uh, tongues have not passed away. God wants us to be able, he'll give us uh, the, the language of his spirit and we'll be able to see breakthrough. We'll be able to be edified. We'll be able to pray the perfect will of God and enter into arenas and places that we would never be able to do otherwise apart from the Spirit of God. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not just from the outside in. Now for us today as believers, it is from the inside out. And the Holy Ghost wants to help you. So let him be your helper, even in your times of weakness, especially in your times of weakness. And I'm telling you, the Bible says, if God's for you, come on, who can be against you? Amen. God wants you to triumph more than you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. So you guys have submitted great questions. Let's get to as many as we possibly yeah, can. Yeah, I wish we had another half an hour. I know, guys. right? Man. So Jennifer on chat says, yeah. when I begin to pray in tongues, it always comes out as singing in tongues. Yeah, great. Um, is, it, is that okay? Or is that the same as praying in tongues or is that worshiping? Yeah, so that's a great question and I think it's absolutely fine either way you do this. When you sing with the Spirit, here, here's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I will sing with the Spirit and I will speak with the, with the Spirit. I'll pray with the Spirit. I'll pray with the understanding. I'll, I'll go back and forth from singing in the Spirit to singing with the understanding. And I think it's wonderful. I, I think a lot of people find it easier to put melody to it mm -hmm. when they're speaking in tongues. You just begin to put melody to that in the Bible. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 19, 18, 19, to make melody in your heart. Well, when it's coming from the inside out, why not do it in tongues? Amen. Absolutely. I think it's fabulous. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kathy on chat says, does the Holy Spirit make intercession for us always or only when we ask for help? You know, I think the Holy Spirit is so for us. If we really began to uh, appreciate how God is for us, he ever lives to make intercession for us Amen. is what the Bible says. So in that ever living to make intercession for us, the Holy Ghost, remember, he's not just your helper when you need help. He's always our helper. 24-7, the Holy Ghost is our helper. But how awesome is it when we cooperate with him and we ask him specific things, we allow him to have access into every area of our heart where we may not know the will of God or where, like I said earlier, we may even be hiding from ourselves. And see, when the Holy Ghost begins to show you these areas, when he's interceding for you, and he's helping you in your prayer life, when you begin to see these things, then he'll take you to the word of God and he'll show you what the word of God says so that you can allow that stuff to get cut off of your heart, cut out of your life and be conformed to the image of Christ instead of all this other craziness that the world is telling us is normal today. No, we don't want to ever be normal. You know what we want to be? We want to be supernatural. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Just Sally on YouTube says, is it right that a teacher in the children's ministry teaches the children a particular way uh, to speak in tongues? Hmm. Is speaking in tongues different for every person? You know, I think it sounds different. You know, there's, oh, a, there's a sound to when you mm -hmm. speak in tongues, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people struggle with when they begin to speak in tongues because it's a brand new experience for them. Yeah. They think they're just making it up. Yeah. You know, and I remember when I was first baptized in the Holy Ghost, I thought, I mean, this is so stupid, you guys, but I thought the Holy Ghost was just going to take my tongue and make it happen. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I didn't realize that he gives you utterance, which means that those words are already in you waiting to come up, but you've got to cooperate with him by no longer speaking in your known language, but now speaking in the language of your spirit man. So I began to speak in other tongues for the very first time, but it sounded very unusual, very different. And of course, you know, this was many, many, many years ago. <laughs> and I've been in prayer meetings since with a lot of spirit filled believers where I'll be hearing someone else pray in, in the spirit and they sound very different in their prayer language than I do in mine. So I think uh, there's a uniqueness to what comes through our spirit, man. But again, it's all the language of the Holy Ghost. And I think that's just how diverse God is. It's like no, no two people look exactly alike. Right. No, no two people sound exactly alike. So I just think God is so much greater and, and so much more magnificent than we can even comprehend. Man, man, I don't know if that completely answered that question. No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's going to sound different, but you know, I think that beginning stages of how you start speaking yes. is getting over your mind. And I think sometimes maybe it's easier for children to speak. In I think so. <clears throat> yeah. Because as an adult, you have to totally disconnect from your head Yeah. because your, your mind's going, what are you saying? That yeah. doesn't make any sense. What is that? I remember the first few syllables, you know, yeah. that I that I actually began to speak in other tongues. I, you know, I was kind of like ba sha ka cha, you know, and I was like, it sounded so ridiculous to me. <laughs> and then seriously, after about maybe even just five seconds, it was like this gusher just came up from inside out wow. and I was so filled with joy that I started laughing and crying and speaking in tongues all at the same time. And, you know, there was just so much release that happened that once I, I got my head out of the way, I just was so, I, it's almost like I couldn't stop speaking in tongues, even though I could, but it was so much fun and so refreshing that I just wanted to keep doing it for days. You know, I, yeah, the, the experience is different for everybody. everybody. It was never that way for me, but yeah. I've heard people that just instantly. Yeah. A full language. Yeah. You know, not for me. I had to do it by faith yes. as my language grew. Yeah. Because um, it's getting over up here. Yeah. And I've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I had to start out small and do it by faith. But isn't it great how God meets us where we he are does. in that moment? He does. Yeah. He does. Okay. He's so so exactly. So Lindy on Facebook says, why do you say Holy Ghost? Yeah. That always bothers me. Yeah. He was never a ghost. Yeah. And she says, maybe I am still just legalistic from 50 years of old covenant law. <laughs> <laughs> I like that question. Uh, I like that question too. I know. <laughs> it's like when I was a kid, you know, we used to sing this song when we received the offering in, in, in church world. It's called the doxology, you know, <laughs> and the end of the doxology says, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And that's the only reason why I ever knew there was one. <laughs> we knew nothing about the Spirit of God, you know, but I used to think as a little kid, why did they call him a ghost? <laughs> Because you know, the only thing I was aware of was Casper the Friendly Ghost <laughs> from comic books and cartoons, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I know the, the Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, it's really just a term that we've become familiar with in yeah. terms of interchanging between the two. But really, I mean, if you want to be more scripturally correct, usually what the Bible refers to is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But they are absolutely one and the same. Amen. And I know in the King James, it does translate it sometimes. Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, you know, um, let's do another question. I feel like there's a story that I heard from Audrey, Audrey Mack about praying in the spirit for your future. Yes. That will really bless you guys because it's blessed me since my third year in Bible school. Yeah. Since 2016. Praise God. And this is what I utilize on a regular basis when praying in the spirit because it you do pray the perfect will of God for your life. Yeah. And that's for a number of reasons, like you said, right? Is right. that, I, I think for me personally, it's so that I don't screw it up. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's better if I just don't know yeah. what the perfect will is because I'm just going to go there step by step by step, right? Sometimes it's bigger than we think. It's way bigger. So I mean, it freaks you always, out right? or you're like, this is impossible. That yeah. couldn't be God. Yeah. So anyways, I do this on a regular basis. And Audrey Mack was saying that um, she 
her and her husband were going to go to some remote jungle somewhere yeah. and minister to this tribe that was out in the jungle, right? So she said before they went, she had like this image of, you know, like this Indiana Jones with, you know, yeah. machetes and going through the jungle, you know, so yeah. she had this whole image. When they got there, the people that were bringing them in had rented bulldozers, like two or three bulldozers. Wow. And they basically bulldozed a path straightway to this village that they Come were going to minister. And she said when she saw it, the Lord spoke to her and said, that's what praying in the spirit will I do love that. for you to your future. There you go. You don't have to chop stuff down. You don't have to meander here or there. It bulldozes a path to your future. Yeah. And so when I go to pray in the spirit, that's what I literally imagine with my brain. Cause yeah. you got to find something to do with your brain sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. And so I'm just imagining, I mean, listen, you guys, uh, any, any overgrowth, anything that falls in your path, it bulldozes it. That's what praying in the spirit will do. Yeah. You're praying that perfect will of God and the spirit is praying. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That's so awesome. Yeah. And you know, many times, even when you're praying with the understanding, you know, if you if you're a journal person, you know, where you mm -hmm. keep a journal, you'll be praying, and you'll be praying with understanding. But then you'll take a minute to just kind of, you know, meditate a little bit, pause, mm -hmm. and you'll start listening, and you'll write down what you think you're hearing in your journal. Well, you know what? You can do the same thing by praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you pray in tongues, you can pray with the Spirit, and then take some time to listen and begin to pray out with the understanding That's what good. it is that you're hearing. That's and many good. times God has to bypass our understanding mm -hmm. because we will always limit ourselves That's and it. go to that lowest common denominator instead of going for what God really has for us. Amen. So a lot of times that's why he has us pray it out in the Holy Ghost is because we're praying that perfect will of God. Amen. Wow. Wow is right. So big. It's so big and it's so um, easy. It's That's so what I easy. like about it because it's like yeah. all the pressure is off me. The Spirit's praying through me and he's praying the perfect will. Like yeah. how awesome is how that? How awesome is that? Yeah. And you know, I know we're out of time here already, but another yeah. thing that, that we can do when we pray in tongues is the Bible says we give thanks well. Ah, uh, yes. Wow, think about yes. that. Yes. You know, sometimes when you're really stressed and you just don't know what to do. <laughs> you're just like, you, I love you, God. You're so good. Yeah. I love Run you, God. Out of words. You're, you're just so good, God. You're so good. Okay, <laughs> let's say that a hundred times now. You know? <laughs> or let's shift over into praying in the Holy Ghost or singing Amen. in the Holy Ghost. And, and you know what? We're giving thanks well. Yes. We're, we're declaring the perfect will of God. We're, we're praying mysteries from heaven through our spirit man. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Why would not you pray in tongues? Amen. Right? Amen. The benefits are absolutely incredible. Oh, it's so great. And yeah. you know, we didn't get to all of your questions, but I would encourage you right now. I know you're watching and this is not by happen chance. God has set you up to release the fear, release whatever, or maybe this is your first time hearing about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I would encourage you, do not hesitate right now. Give us a call at 719-635-1111. Somebody wants to personally walk Hallelujah. you through yes. being baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. That's right. Um, you know, there, there's always this question is like, do you have to speak in tongues? And no, I love you get how, to. yeah, Andrew's yeah. like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I mean, you? like, it's one yeah. of the most powerful gifts. It's, it's the biggest weapon that we've been given as believers. Yeah. So why wouldn't we want to use it? And right? Andrew often says, you know, do I have to pray in tongues to get to heaven? And he'll yeah, often no. say, no, you'll even get there quicker. Without you'll get there quicker, right? Because you don't know. <laughs> exactly. So, so oh, praise man. God. Give us a call, you guys. Or maybe I feel like there's somebody that's watching that you just started praying in tongues right now. Oh, how We want to hear about that. Amen. We want to hear. So give us a call at 719-635-1111. And man, it's an exciting, what a great topic, Amen. Daniel. Amen. Hey, Hallelujah. This is God awesome. Is so good. So please don't hesitate to give us a call for a testimony or if you need prayer or if you want to be walking around utilizing the most powerful gift we've ever been given. Wow. So um, you guys have a blessed evening. Have a good night, Daniel. Yeah, thank you. You do the same. Oh, I will. This All is right. awesome. All right. God bless you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 